What is up guys? Welcome to our very first team builder for the GPC for season 6. This week we are taking on Josh and the Texas Turtwig. He's got a pretty scary team. I'll run over it really quickly. It should be coming up on your right side. We've got Mega Pinsir, Starmie, Cobalion, Sylveon, Flygon, which is his Z eligible Mon, Rotomo, Pillaswine, Alolan Muck, Magmortar, Dust Noir, and Staravia. Josh is one of the only teams that has 11 Pokemon, more than 10 basically, across the entire division, our division, the Grand Conference. But uh, we, uh, I think we're pretty prepared for him. So let's go over our team really quick. First of all, of course, we are bringing Luna, the Megalopony. Uh, we have Return, High Jump Kick, Fake Out, Quick Attack. It's a pretty standard set, but it does a lot of work against him. If you see his team, uh, Mega Pinsir is the only thing that really threatens it out, and even at that, it has to go for Quick Attack or it risks dying to a return after rocks. Uh, if it switches in in mega form, of course. So, uh, and quick attack doesn't kill me, especially with this 32 EVs. I don't even think a crit can kill me. So, that's good. Look at Starmie. Uh, Starmie is not going to appreciate taking a fake out into return. Uh, Cobalion doesn't like high jump kick. Sylveon doesn't switch into two returns. Uh, if, it, if rocks are up, uh, I have a very good chance to knock out a defensive Sylveon with two returns, even after a protect. So, that's, uh, that's some good news right there. Flygon doesn't like high jump kick into quick attack. Uh, Rotom Mo doesn't like return either. Uh, Pillow Swine doesn't like high jump kick. Lolan Muck doesn't like high jump kick. Uh, Magmortar doesn't like return or high jump kick. Dust Noir is like kind of the only thing that could switch in, but from Adamant, it's not going to take two returns, even if it's fully defensive. And Storavia, I mean, if he brings that thing, I'll be surprised, but yeah. Uh, so this is our Megalopony. We have enough speed on this set. We were able to run Adamant this week. Uh, because we have enough speed to outspeed a max speed Starmie, as well as a Scarfed Sylveon, which I could see coming. Uh, that's definitely a possibility. I know I have two Steel types that check it pretty well, uh, but neither of my Steel types actually have recovery on them. I do have Wish on, um, on Jirachi, uh, as you will see in a second, but I do not have uh, leftovers on either one of my Steel types, so switching into Sylveon could become problematic, which is why I wanted to outspeed a Scarf variant, as well as, a, as, as, well as any other kind of variant, so move on to Jirachi, lucky and bad. Uh, we're bringing a Shookaberry set. This is my switch into his Mega Pinsir. Obviously, that thing is a threat. Um, if he goes for return, he's not going to do too much damage because we are almost fully defensive, as you can see, 248, 240, uh, with a lax nature. Uh, the reason I'm running lax is because I have both uh, Ancient Power and Iron Head, which makes me more susceptible uh, to switching in, like, I, I have a hard time switching into physical attacks. Uh, sorry, special attacks, excuse me, like Sylveon's um, Hyper Voices or Rotom's uh, volt switches, anything like that. So, uh, this also means that I can switch out of Alolan Muck pretty comfortably uh, if, if that thing comes. But I do have Iron Head to flinch it down. I also have Ancient Power, as you can see, for the Mega Pinsir in Mega Form. Uh, it does upwards of 75%, so that's very, very good. Uh, we also have Wish on here, like I said before. Shookaberry is to cover Earthquake. Mega Pinsir is more than likely bringing Earthquake against me over close combat because, of course, I do have an Empoleon as well as a, uh, as well as a Jirachi, so you can hit both neutrally. Um, he could also bring knockoff, which is something that Johnny brought against me in our test game, but uh, I'm, I mean, I should be okay. And the last move is light screen. Now, the reason I'm bringing light screen is because the only thing really keeping um, Zygarde, our next Pokemon, from setting up is Starmie's Ice Beam and Rotom Moe's Hidden Power Ice or um, Magmortar's Hidden Power Ice, for example. So if I can get up a light screen, I know it's only up for five turns, but there's a segment of plays that I've envisioned in my head that would allow me to get in my uh, Zygarde and start setting up coils and dragon dances, as you can see this set right here. Uh, the EV spread's kind of weird. I have 241 speed. Once again, at plus one, this is enough to outspeed Starmie, which is his fastest Pokemon, of course. Uh, we also have 220 special defense. This is so that behind the light screen, I can take hits. Uh, Coil increases our defense anyway, so we don't have to worry too much about that. We also we all already have a really good defense stat of base 120, uh, 121. Paired with that 200 HP, which puts us at 407. Uh, I can't remember exactly what the 28 attack is for. I think it's to give me a better chance of knocking out Starmie at plus two. Uh, with a thousand arrows so yeah thousand arrows is there so that i can also hit the flygon because i'm not bringing stab this week i'm bringing iron tail now it only really hits sylveon realistically but sylveon is the biggest threat to this thing because of coil like mega pincer can't do much to me it'll do like 30 percent after leftovers uh with its uh jolly return and i think he has to run jolly because of jirachi if i'm not mistaken so um he 
uh, he's going to not do too much to me. And if I continue to coil and then set up some Dragon Dances, Iron Tail eventually will do it KO, especially if rocks are up. That's going to be a huge priority. This game is going to be to get rocks up and make sure they stay up, which is why we're bringing our last Mon, as you will see in a second uh, when we get to it. But our, our next Mon is going to be Empoleon. Cobalt, uh, Shiny, as you can see, we have uh, three Shinies right here uh, that we're bringing. Uh, actually, this is not Shiny, sorry, this just matches this in color. But uh, we are bringing in the Shiny Empoleon with an Air Balloon, uh, Scald, Ice Beam, Stealth Rock, and Knock Off. So, the idea behind this set was, uh, if he brings Pillaswine over Cobalion, I want to have a good lead against it. Uh, Pillaswine is definitely a possibility against my team, especially because I have a Gorgeist, I have an Empoleon, uh, I have a... Uh, Zygarde, which uh, if it gets out of control, he could always priority Ice Shard me. So uh, there's a possibility that that thing does come against me, absolutely. And if it is a Stealth Rocker, I want to have a good lead matchup against it. I'm not bringing Hazard Removal this week, guys, uh, because as you can see, my team's not too weak to Hazards. In fact, the first four Mons all resist Hazards, uh, well, when Megalopony is Mega Evolved. Uh, and the last two have uh, Recovery have uh, passive recovery and leftovers, as well as their own recovery and wish and synthesis, as you'll see. Uh, so I'm not too worried about Stealth Rocks this game, uh, and he doesn't have a Spiker on his team. So uh, realistically, it's not too much of an issue, which is why I'm not packing Defog. I thought this set was better. Scald, of course, hits the uh, Pillaswine, and he has to break my balloon before he can hit me with his stab. Uh, also, I could have Defog. He doesn't know right away, so uh, if he thinks that I have Defog, he's, he might like pass up on going for his... Uh, for his stealth rocks and just switch out of his pillow swine knowing that he can't hit me for super effective damage in which case i get off a free skull the chance to burn is always nice ice beam is there of course for mega pincer uh also the air balloon helps against mega pincer because it means that uh if he gets a kill with pincer i can bring in my empoleon uh and force it out essentially because he has to hit me with a return to pop the balloon and he doesn't know if i have rock slide he doesn't know what kind of coverage i have ice beam actually hits a little bit harder which is why I'm bringing that. It also hits the Flygon, of course, and that's another thing that could usually hit me with its ground-type moves, uh, but I can also force Flygon out on a revenge kill uh, if I still have my balloon intact. So uh, that's the reasoning behind that. Stealth Rocks, of course, like I said, are going to be super important in this game, and Knock Off is to make sure that if Starmie, wants, if Starmie is a switch into me, that I can get rid of its item, especially if it's a Life Orb. That's going to be extremely important, as you'll see in a second. But uh, this is our Empoleon set. We are bringing Torrent, not Defiant. He doesn't have Intimidate. He doesn't have Webs or anything like that. So there's no real reason to bring um, Defiant on this set. Plus, we only have a knockoff as a physical attack. So it's not that bad. Anyway, uh, let's move on. We have Florges here, Sage. And um, we're bringing a Babiri Berry set. Basically, this is my response to a setup Flygon. If it's already set up. Um, I have Protect, Moonblast, Wish, and Aromatherapy, your typical set. Uh, he does have things that can burn me, like Dust Noir. Uh, and things that can status me, like, um, I don't know, um, Rotomo, Sylveon, they all have forms of status, so, gotta be very careful with that, um, which is why I'm bringing Aromatherapy on this set, plus there was nothing really better to run, I guess I could replace, uh, you know what, I think I might be able to replace Aromatherapy with Hidden Power Rock, and the reason I want, I want to say Hidden Power Rock is not only for the Pinsir, but the Magmortar is an issue to my team, um, that's something I didn't cover, but that thing is definitely coming, 100%. If I don't see that thing, I'll be very happy, but uh, I'm almost 100% sure that Magmortar is going to come because I don't have a fire switch in on my team other than Flareon, which I was going to originally bring, guys. Uh, in fact, I was going to bring a Flame Charge, uh, Toxic Orb, Facade, Flare Blitz set, which if you look at his team, it actually just runs through. But the problem with that is that he's going to bring a check to Megalopony. Almost everybody brings a Scarfer, uh, especially a Scarfer that has super effective coverage against Megalopony, uh, such as Cobalion, which is kind of why I have uh, Gorgeist, as you guys will see in a second. But uh, Florgis is here mainly for the Flygon, like I said. Uh, if he brings an Iron Tail um, Steelium Z set and turns it into... What's the name of the word? Uh, I think it's Corkscrew Crash. Yeah, if he turns it into Corkscrew Crash, with the Baviri Berry, I can live it and fire back a Moonblast, and if I protect, it's going to do almost no damage. And then he has to risk hitting the, the next Iron Tail, which is fine by me. Uh, and then I can just Wish Protect and Moonblast his, uh, his flag on down. And like I said before, if Floor just ever goes down, then I can always go into, um, into Empoleon after, uh, and then just Ice Beam and force him out, because we are on a Balloon, so... Uh, we do have two forms of Wish on this team, so uh, things that would normally get da worn down pretty quickly, such as my Air Balloon, uh, Empoleon, Zygarde, which can is probably going to end up taking a few hits along the way, uh, Megalopony, which I ended up uh, in our test game against Johnny. I actually switched it into his Rotom Mo as he tricked, 
Uh, I had a feeling that he was choice and he was going to go for a trick, and I, I call that turn perfectly. Uh, and then I got a free return. So whenever that happens, whenever Lopany comes in for free, that is bad news bears for Josh. Uh, because as you can see, like I said before, he does not have a switch in on his team to a return or a high jump kick. Now, uh, Johnny brought Chopple against me on his Cobalion. Jose, in our test game, uh, brought Scarfed. So, I wanted to be able to, to cover both. Um, the only way I can do that is by bringing Gorgeist. Now, Gorgeist straight up walls Cobalion unless it's a setup set. Uh, but even at that, like, it's going to get worn down really, really quickly. Uh, even if it starts setting up SDs, I can just start seed bombing and leech seeding and synthesis uh, all over the place. So, it's going to be extremely hard for his Cobalion to break down my Gorgeist. I'll show you guys the calc. We're actually fully specially defensive, and I'll explain why in a second. But if I show you Cobalion, uh, let's say the Swords Dance set versus Gorgeist. Uh, hold on a second. Gorgeist. Uh, super. If I just take off all this investment and make it 240 here with a careful nature. As you guys can see, Iron Head still only does 27%. So, which means after leftovers, uh, if that's what we are, which I'm going to change it to in a second, I'll show you. Uh, it is a possible 5-hit KO after Leftovers Recovery, so there's a chance that he 5-hit KOs me. Um, it's not guaranteed. It does a maximum of 102 uh, onto my HP of 374 and a minimum of 85, so there is a chance that he only gets a 5-hit KO. He has to flinch me repeatedly to beat me through Synthesis, so uh, that's pretty much my Cobalion check, but at the same time, it's also my Spin Blocker. As I mentioned before, rocks have to stay up this game. If he brings this flag on as a Defogger, that's fine. That would have been one reason to bring Empoleon, but that's like literally the only reason, and it's not worth it uh, with Defiant, of course. Uh, but this pressures out his Starmie because it is a grass type, of course. And because I'm fully specially defensive, if he's not running, running Life Orb, uh, Timid Starmie with Ice Beam and predicts the turn that I switch into Gorgeist on his Starmie, then he's not too hit KOing me. And I can hit him back really hard with Seed Bomb and proceed to go out into, um, into Lopany on the following turn. Plus, if he's Life Orb, uh, unless I get an absolute minimum roll after one life orb hit and a stealth rock switch in, Seed Bomb kills, even with no investment, because Gorgias, of course, has a base 100 attack. And this 20 speed that you see on here, I'll just explain my speed tiers really quickly. Floor just doesn't have any. Uh, this we explained, this we explained. Uh, this was for a Sylveon, for a max speed Sylveon, so that I can at least outspeed it and iron head it down. Um, sorry about that. Empoleon is for a... Um, what was it again? Uh, I believe it was also a Sylveon, but a min speed Sylveon. I originally had Flash Cannon on here. I technically don't need this speed, uh, but I still like having it. Um, I should also just calc something real quick. Hold on. Pinsir, Mega. We're going to do this live. Let's see. Empoleon, especially defensive support. If I add 20 investment right here, I can take a close combat a little bit better if he does decide to run it. Because otherwise, it's it's a way higher roll. So yeah, maybe I want to do that instead. This is my switch into Sylveon if it is Specs. But then he pops my Balloon, which is really annoying. I could always go into Florges. I think Florges can take a hit. So maybe, uh, yeah, maybe I tone down on this a little bit. Just make sure I can take a close combat. Uh, take this off and then put 36 here. Is that going to do it? Let's see. Uh, 36... Uh, 36 almost guarantees that we live a, even a close combat from, uh, from Jolly. So yeah, I think I'm going to do that instead. That's nicer. Plus, I can always wish pass into Empoleon, so it's not too bad. Um, also, a, a Sylveon locked into Hidden Power, uh, sorry, not Hidden Power, into Hyper Voice is still not going to do that much to Jirachi, even though it's a negative split F nature. I'll just show you guys really quickly. Jirachi, uh, where is it? Stealth Rock but take all of this off, make it lax, uh, with max HP versus Sylveon, choice specs. Hyper Voice is going to do 41%, so it's, uh, out of range of, um, of two-hit KOing me, even after rocks, and I can just wish and then Iron Head on the following turn, so it's not too bad, you know, like, I can, I can definitely switch in Jirachi into the Sylveon as well, plus the Sylveon, again, is not a huge threat, he kind of needs to bring it as a check to the Lopany, because he has nothing else on his team, guys, there's nothing that switches into Lopany at all on his team, so if he brings a defensive, uh, Sylveon, I can always switch in my Jirachi, every single time, just wish up and then Iron Head on the following turn. There's always the threat of a Lolan Muck, but I flinch that thing down. Uh, we just play odds at that point, so that should be fine. So, like I was saying, Gorgeist uh, is there to spin block. 
Uh, mainly, it's it's very important that I be able to spin block him. He knows that I have a ghost. He doesn't know if I'm bringing it, though. Like I said before, I almost brought Flareon, uh, but I decided having it check to uh, Cobalion would be better this game. Uh, because Cobalion is what swept me in my first test game. And once I brought Gorgas to my second test game, I was fine against Cobalion. I switched in. I didn't even keep in my Lopany against it. I knew that it wasn't Choice Scarfed uh, when Johnny brought it against me, but I still didn't keep it in. I still didn't high jump kick. Uh, because I had a feeling that he was Choppel, and when I switched into Gorgeist, I frisked him, and I saw that he was a Choppel Berry set. So, that's a real- this is a really useful ability, guys. This is so, so good. Like, having this is amazing. Uh, you don't even know. Like, this is really good. Uh, this is useless because this can't be spored anyway, uh, and this is also useless. Frisk is pretty much its only good ability, but... Uh, it still does wonders. Like, this thing is really good. By the way, I didn't explain Rock Slide, but you guys can pretty much figure that out. He has a Mega Pinsir. If he feels that switching that thing in is safe against me, it's going to get destroyed <laughs> by a, a Rock Slide. It's not going to kill. I don't think it kills. I'll show you guys. Uh, I think it might have a chance to, but even that. Uh, Gorgeist. Super defensive. Give me Rock Slide. Rock Slide. Uh, does 67 to 81, so there is a chance to kill after rocks, um, if he's, well, I mean, if he's mega and he switches in on rocks, he's dead. If he's not mega, then I'm gonna do not that much to him, because he'll just be a regular pincer, I believe, uh, in that case. Pincer, uh, regular NU Swords Dance, uh, still does 39 to 47, so that's very respectable damage, especially if I can just switch in Jirachi and force him out, so... That's really nice. Anyway, that's the team, guys. Um, let me know what you think in the uh, comment section down below. You should be catching the game tomorrow. Our very first game of the, of the GPC, which uh, while I'm recording this, I should be having in a couple of hours at the latest. So I'm really uh, I'm nervous. Uh, I'm excited at the same time. Uh, I already saw some of the results from other matches. So uh, make sure to check out all the other coaches. Uh, if you don't know who the other coaches are, uh, I'm going to try to get everybody's links in my descriptions, because that's uh, that's probably the best thing to do, kind of like the GBA does as well. Uh, just have all the coaches' links in the description so you guys can go check out their battles. Uh, our battles, I believe, have to be out um, by noon, I think it is. Uh, it's always noon on Saturdays, because that's when we always uploaded last season. So I'm going to make sure to have my battle out for you guys tomorrow at noon. So make sure to stick around for that. If you're excited to see if we can take our first game in the uh, GPC Season 6, then uh, make sure to hit that like button for me. Uh, leave a comment. Let me know what you thought of the team. And subscribe if you haven't already to catch the game tomorrow. And I will catch you guys later. Ciao.